Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. May the good Lord be with you today, and I pray that His Spirit will continue to be with you, and may His face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. Our reading today, it comes to us from Psalm 118. We will read from verse 1 to 29. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations come past me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They come past me about, yea, they come past me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They come past me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou art thrust sore at me, that I might fall, but the Lord help me. The Lord is my strength and song, and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord do it valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. The gates of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refuse is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be ye that cometh in the name of the Lord, we have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which had shew us light, bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns, of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. 29 and last says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. We give God thanks again this morning for his word. Uh, and may as you meditate on his word this morning, may you be blessed and may you be encouraged and may you also draw nearer to him. In this psalm, as well as in many of the other psalms that we read from time to time, we realize that the servant David continues to give God praise. He exalts the name of Jesus because he realized that God is truly merciful. 
he started out by saying that what? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and because his mercy endured forever. Isn't that true? Hasn't God been merciful to you and to me? Sure he has. And so we have reason to give God thanks. And that is why the servant David continues to exhibit praise to God because he realized that God is very good to him. He has so many testimony of God, you know, coming through for him, of God defending him, protecting him from his enemies, providing for his need, even in those moments where God had to draw him up, had to reprove him, he realized that God's mercy was still extended towards him in those times. And so that is why he continues to give God praise because he realized that God is truly merciful and that his mercy extends from everlasting to everlasting. Let us not forget to give God praise because he has been good to you. He has been good to me. The chapter also tells us that it is better for us to trust in God and to put our confidence in God than man. And the sad truth is that a lot of us, we trust people more than we trust God. And that is so sad. Some of us, we have people at such a level that if it was possible, they would have taken the very place of God. And that shouldn't be. Man will fail us. That's the truth. How many of us have example where people have failed us? Or leaders fail us practically every single day. The people in our lives let us down. And some of these people that let us down or fail us is not that they intentionally let us down. But we must keep in mind that they are human and then they are those that deliberately will let you down and so when we put our confidence in man we are setting up ourselves to fail and when they fail us we we turn around and we cuss them out but why are we cussing them out? we we are the one that cast our trust on them more than we should have and i'm not saying that we can't trust people but point I'm making that remember that these people that you are putting your confidence in they can fail you and they will fail you from time to time but if we put our confidence in God if we put our trust in God he will never fail us and so may we continue to trust him who is able to keep his word the Bible says that what not one word will return to him void God is not a man that he should lie. So he's not like you and me who tell lie for anything. No, whatever he says, he will do. And so we can hold him at his word. Amen. Now, this Psalm, Psalm 118, is split into two sections. The first part it speaks about God's extended mercies and his grace and his favor and the second half is about the prophetic fulfillment that will happen as it relates to Jesus Jesus coming to hurt and dying and his experience and is also his exaltation so that's the two section that it is broken down into so the first section is verse 1 to 18 and the second section is 19 to 29 so the first part is about giving praise and giving thanks and all of that God's mercy you know being exalted and then the next part is more prophetic in verse 19 to 29 is illustrated the humiliation and also Christ's exaltation as we examine the verse closely, we realize that a lot is taking place here. The Lord Jesus is suffering or will suffer. After his suffering, then his glory will follow. In Acts 4.11, 
it also repeat the verse saying that this is a stone which was set at north of you builders which is become the head of the corner now if anybody knows anything about foundation and about building a structure we know that before you lay the blocks and all of those things you must establish a foundation you must put in supportive beams also make sure that the the foundation or the base is strong enough to hold up the structure because if you don't do that then when you put up the structure it is going to crumble back down because what it has nothing to support it and so we are given here the illustration that Christ is that cornerstone and without Christ nothing that we do can last nothing that we do is stable because what we have laid aside the cornerstone which is Christ the foundational piece of the structure the foundational piece of our life the foundational piece of whatever it is that we are doing and so we have nothing to support that and so it is just going to fall apart so Jesus came and he went through this humiliation just for us he was insulted he was abused he was rejected by the same people who he came to save so the cornerstone was rejected but we realize also that this same cornerstone that they reject or that we reject is the same stone that is gonna crush us imagine that because if we refuse the stone then when the time of judgment come we will have no support on which we can stand and so let us not turn our eyes away from Jesus let us not reject him let us not follow in the footsteps of our forefathers because Jesus come to save that which is lost which is you and I and his sacrifice is one of love he could have chosen not to come but he came took on the sin of this world went through the whole ordeal of this experience just that he might save you and I and so the door or the gate of righteousness has been open let us walk in it is dear but in order for you and I to walk in we have to comply with the guidelines so in other words we have got to follow the precepts that God has outlined so just like when you are going to the airport you cannot go th through customs without your visa or your passport true that's the stipulation that's the requirement and in the same way we cannot enter in to the gates into heaven or into his righteousness holding on to our sins holding on to those things that has no part in his kingdom and that is why he came to die so that we can get rid of those things so his righteousness his grace his mercy has been made available to you and I and so we should accept his favor we should accept his grace and his love and that is why the servant David desires to go into the gate of righteousness so that he can give God the praise that he so duly deserves. so he yearns for that experience you and I should also yearn for that experience don't you want to go to heaven don't you want to see Jesus face don't you want to spend eternity with your Savior I'm sure you do and if you do not then I would pray that you will think about it because it would be for your benefit understand that this is important that 
His mercy is there. May we not reject Him, but may we accept Him, accept His gift and His sacrifice, so that when He comes again, that we can be with Him. Because the same cornerstone that was rejected, now he, that cornerstone is exalted. Jesus is in heaven and he's still working on our case, pleading our case before the Father. And so the work continues, but it won't be forever because one day it will be a cutoff point. And I pray that you and I will not found in the balance wanting. So may God continue to bless you and may God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.